What's next? You decide. This is just the beginning. What's next? Well, the best way to predict the future is to create it, according to Alan Kay. This next slide uh, is going to show a brief video clip of some innovations that have happened about over the last hundred years and the way that uh, things have changed as a result and predictions that people had made on on some of the technologies and innovations I think will be really um, eye-opening to you as you kind of think about it and think about where we've come and, and then going into the future where we may be heading. So I think this might give you a different perspective. So enjoy this next clip. What's next for education in, in the future for education and with the innovation and technology? Well, I think iTunes has a pretty awesome iTunes University. If you've not been able to look at that, you may want to scour that a little bit and see the different universities that have uh, collaborated with uh, iTunes and have put information up there. A lot of it is uh, free, and uh, if not most of it, but you can go there and look and get supplemental material. Uh, whether you're at that university or another one to interact with. So this is a very good concept as well. And as you see, it's something that can be transferred onto almost any of your devices. Now, the, obviously, this is with the Apple products, so the iPod, iPad, iPad, iPod Touch, and iPhone. So, um, it, so but uh, with the regular computer, you be able to access it on a PC or a Mac. But um, there are... Um, Limitations to that, like with the iBook reader and things, um, only being able to create things on a, on the Apple uh, products. But um, let's look at the next slide. We'll see um, some other educational resources that are available. So let's look at those. The next slide here is Open Education Resources, which has really been a growing movement, um, providing uh, students and educators with materials that are out there for free to use. And so this has been a real game changer. Uh, you'll see more uh, text coming online as well. There's a lot of, of sites online where you can actually go and read uh, text digitally. Now, if you want to download them to a reader or to print, uh, there'll be a, a fee to pay. But um, this 
there's a lot of um, resources that students and educators both can both contribute to as well as you. So uh, this is, is a really exciting trend, especially for uh, those in less uh, fluent areas of the world. So this is really having a, a, a great effect on, on, on education globally. Also, uh, what's next? Uh, the great thing is there's a lot of uh, good conferences out there. The Sloan Sea, along with Merlot, is doing a combined conference out in Las Vegas this uh, summer uh, in July of 2012. And so um, I'm also able uh, going to be making uh, some presentations there as well. But just look at the title, Emerging Technologies for Online Learning. So there is a lot of uh, future development ha happening. Uh, a lot of good networking and ideas coming together on shaping the future of, of education, both on the in in the university as well as in schools and uh, globally around the world and influencing. So things like these are are really exciting um, happenings to provide us with resources in helping us to um, collaborate with others in our field to help innovate and create and, and um, invent the future. So. Take advantage of these opportunities when you get an opportunity to go to something like this or even to present. Um, these things will really be beneficial to your professional development. Another exciting trend is online publishing. For example, the Global eLearning Journal is a journal that is a global referee chronicle of innovation, implementation, and evaluation. And it's a, an art, it's a journal publication that I started using a WordPress site. And we're going to have our first edition coming out in July of 2012. So that's exciting and just a great venue for people to promote their ideas, share ideas on uh, papers, uh, both um, practical papers as well as research papers. Um, and uh, literature reviews and uh, practical papers out there on the use of technologies that are accessible and uh, available for, for teachers and students to use to uh, help with their learning, online learning, as well as um, those who are in a global environment in less affluent areas and don't have access to libraries and things like that where they can download a, you know, go to a library and get paper copies of things where things have been digitized on the internet and things can be used and to promote uh, learning in, in that environment, in, in an online environment. So um, just a really good um, a place to uh, draw uh, the community together to to contribute uh, to contribute their best practices for online learning and global e-learning. Well, as we think about what's next and your opportunity to decide, this is just the beginning. Is you're going to be shaping the future of education here before you know it. Uh, I think that um, it's good to always look back and to think through of where we've come from, and so I've. Put on the next slide a video of the Knowledge Navigator was developed in 1987 for a um, Educon conference that Apple had done with um, uh, one of their CEOs, uh, Scully, John Scully, who was the CEO at the time, and showing the future of what um, computing may look like and even even a, a futuristic idea of the iPad from um, Alan Kay's vision in the 60s of the Dyna book. And so it's really kind of neat to look back and see that from 1987 and realize where we are now with uh, our mobile devices speaking to us and all this sort of thing and seeing where we're going to go in the future. But this is just something kind of neat I think you'll enjoy. It's just a couple minute uh, brief video. But as you go uh, forward from this course, I hope that you will continue to um, to envision and dream and think of innovative ways in which we can um, continue to develop and innovate to deliver our content to those who um, we're communicating to our students or our trainees. And so uh, there are many, many ideas out there. We have just barely scratched the surface on a lot of the programs and the apps and the software hardware issues and things like that. There's just so many and really wasn't the point of this course to be able to do all that, uh, to go through each and every one, but just to kind of give you a broad spectrum and paintbrush of what is out there and for you to um, consider and evaluate those and analyze which ones would be the best for you to use in your uh, teaching enterprise. So I hope you enjoy the next video and then with that we will end this session. Thank you.
messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you about your father. Surprise birthday party next Sunday. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm-hmm, fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon and its effects on rainfall in the Sub-Sahara. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. Okay. Let's see. There's an article about five years ago, Dr. Flemson or something. He really disagreed with the direction of Jill's research. John Fleming of Uppsala University. He published in the Journal of Earth Science of July 20 of 2006. Yes, that's it. He was challenging Jill's projection of the amount of carbon dioxide being released to the atmosphere through deforestation. I'd like to recheck his figures. Excuse me, Jill Gilbert is calling back. Great, put her through. Hi Mike, what's up? Jill, thanks for getting back to me. You know, I have a simulation that shows the spread of the Sahara over the last 20 years. Here, let me show you. Nice, very nice. I've got some maps of the Amazon area during the same time. Let's put these together. Interesting. I can definitely use this. Thanks for your time, Jill. I really appreciate it. While you were busy, your mother called again to remind you to pick up the birthday cake. Hmm. Fine, fine, fine. Um, print this article before I go. Now printing. Okay, I'm going to lunch now. If Kathy calls, tell her I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Also, find out if I can set up a meeting tomorrow morning with, um, Conley. Enjoy your lunch. Hello, Professor Bradford is away at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Michael, this is your mother. I know that you're there. I'm just calling to remind you to call your sister.